the classic standing waste and overflow. There are still thousands of them here in New York City, and that's what this video is all about. Hey folks, it's Bob here. If you find these videos helpful, please, please hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to claim your free video series, The 7 Things You Shouldn't Have to Pay a Plumber to Do. And to learn more about how to prevent a plumbing disaster in your home, check out my new video course, The No-Brainer Home Plumbing Inspection Checklist. Happy plumbing! All right, guys, here we are up on the bench, and you have a bird's eye view of a typical two inch standing waste and overflow. Now, these are classic waste and overflows. They're all over New York City. When I grew up as a kid, this is how bathtubs were hooked up. Bathtubs didn't have an overflow hole up on the top, the overflow was actually encased inside of the chrome barrel that stands up above the tile floor. And what you're looking at here on the bench is the actual standing waste as we take it out of the box. So up on top you have the chrome barrel with the plunger in it. Then you're going to see the T and exiting the left of the T is the actual shoe that actually works its way over and gets connected to the tub drain. And that can be, you know, cut depending upon the manufacturer of the tub, you know, their varying lengths. Sometimes I've had to cut them, uh, you know, a little bit to get them to fit and then they exit down into a trap and in this case you have a PVC trap which I will tell you you do not find here in New York City and what I'm going to do is when I when I give you a close-up of all the components here I, I will show you how they're typically hooked up here in New York City but uh, you know if we're going to do a retrofit if I have the room I will use PVC but I will tell you that 99% of the time I will put back what we call here a low seal bath trap, which is a very shallow bath trap because sometimes, you know, in, in the multifamily um, buildings we have here in New York City, we don't have that kind of room to put in a deep PVC trap like you're looking at. So let me, um, let me take this thing apart and then I will uh, zoom in on the individual components and explain to you to the best of my ability how this thing works and then what we're going to do is shoot into a little screencast i'll put a little screencast together for you and actually show you uh you know what this thing looks like or i'll show you some pictures of uh, actual standing waste so sit tight and relax and i will be right back all right, here we are with a little closer look at some of these components here and i'll bring up first the shoe the actual tub shoe so this is uh, the actual part of the um, the strainer that actually gets screwed into the bathtub. And uh, this is not going to come out because the screw has to come out here. So let's show you this piece by piece. We'll take the strainer out and this is the actual shoe or the piece that goes through your bathtub. So there we go. This is the shoe that would be sitting underneath the bathtub. Then on top of here uh, is a series of a rubber gasket and a fiber gasket that comes supplied with, with the standing waste. And then we would then put our putty, plumber's putty, a nice liberal amount of putty around this flange here. And that would get set in through the top of the tub. And then we would catch our shoe this would get screwed in nice and tight as you start to screw this down the putty is going to squeeze out above inside the tub and you will get your strainer tool and tighten this up and the putty is going to squeeze out and that's going to make a, a beautiful tight seal once that's all squeezed out then you can go ahead and follow up and put your uh, your little strainer back you can pull that blue paper off and you'll be good to go and, and again, uh, these come at, at a pre-cut length. Sometimes I have found myself having to cut half inch or so off of it, depending upon the uh, manufacturer of the bathtub. And as you can see here, they employ the, um, the nylon gasket here, which, which I prefer to the rubber gaskets. And this would then 
get installed into the T. And I would actually put on my threads there my Megalock thread joint compound. And then I would tighten up that brass nut. I'd whack that up real, real tight. So that's the what we call in the trade the shoe. The shoe of the standing waist. Well, let me put this back down on the bench. And I'm going to bring up next the barrel. And this is the barrel that actually sits above the floor. This gets screwed into the top of the T right here. And this is the plunger. Now this is the actual plunger that stops the water up. And I will show you that in a second. This is a flange. This is just a, a finished flange. Once this uh, is installed and either your tile work is done or you've cemented around the floor, this is just a, a, a trim flange that will cover and you'll get a nice, neat looking job when everything is all finished. Now this barrel is a chrome plated piece of tubing, brass tubing. You know, over here you're going to see the very fine threads that are on it and, and the T has very fine threads on the receiving end. So we, we come down this way, this is the top of the barrel. Okay, and this is adjustable. You can adjust the, the, the actual up and down motion, how far up and down this goes before it actually stops up the water. And, and that is going to be different for different kind of traps, different kind of situations. And so you'll have to make adjustments to this. You can adjust the handle. You'll turn the handle. Once you get it to where you need it to get it, you can, you can tighten up this nut just to keep that handle from moving again. But let me pull this flange off here and show you as we take the plunger out. Now this is the plunger that actually stops up the water inside the bathtub. And you're going to see here, there's that plunger. So as you fill up the bathtub with these things, the water actually fills up inside of that chrome sleeve. So as you're filling up the tub, water is filling up inside the chrome sleeve. Now, bear in mind, bathtubs back in the good old days didn't have um, overflows. And I will tell you, this is a 2016 version of a standing waste. And as I'm recording this video, I am very surprised to see that they didn't actually put the overflow holes up here. They actually, what they did was, if you look in the top here, so if the water gets up to a certain point within that tube there, the water is supposed to flow back inside of these holes. And I got to tell you, these holes are extremely small. And if you're filling up that tub at a fast pace, uh, I seriously doubt that these holes are going to take enough water uh, to prevent the tub from overflowing. Typically, in the old days, when we had really, really heavy and premium standing waste and overflows, I mean, this is not, this is not anywhere near the quality of, of, the, of the standing waste and overflows I used to work on as a kid. But they had two holes, two huge holes, one on each side of the tube here. So when the water got up to a certain level, it would just crawl inside the, uh, the holes and the water would go back down and it would prevent the, the tub from overflowing. So I will tell you that in this case here, they give you these small little holes up on top. And uh, for those people who were challenged and didn't know what to do with this thing, they actually printed the words lift on here, which is, I guess, pretty cool. But again, this sits down inside this chrome barrel here. So this would go inside the chrome barrel like this. And this would get screwed on. And, and simply, you know, you'd fill the tub up. It would go that You'd drop it down. It would just drop down by gravity. I'm holding it sideways in the video here, but it would just drop down by gravity. And when you wanted to let the tub drain, you just lift it and you twist it. You twist it so it doesn't drop down. You could lift it and twist it, or, and that'll just drop down like that. So you can take it out. It'll stay up. The tub will drain. You want to you wanna stop up the water, you just, and it'll drop down and stop up the water. And that had to be adjusted. That adjustment had to be made in order for that thing to stop up the water. So let me next bring up the T, which ties all these components together. 
and here we go this is the T now through the top of the T here you're gonna see these fine threads this is where the barrel gets made up the chrome barrel goes in the top this chrome barrel here gets screwed in the top this part here is going to take the shoe and you know that's depending on whether you're working on a left side tub a right side tub and then everything exits the bottom now they supply you with this little tubular tailpiece and it's it's funny because they actually they actually have female threads in here if you can see these fine little threads and they give you this little tailpiece that has these fine little threads on them but I got to tell you I don't use this um, we're working with such tight spaces in a retrofit situation here in New York that I do not use this now I've seen guys use this you can screw this in I would actually use a good quality threaded joint compound I would actually use something called uh, Megalock by a company called Hercules and then you could whack that in there with this blue Megalite Me Megalock pipe joint compound then you could run this beveled gasket up followed by this and I would whack that up if you chose to use this thing and then this could then be put into a let me bring up this trap this PVC trap and then that could be set into to here like this and and that that nut on that trap already has a nylon gasket in it you could do that but I will tell you that here in the Big Apple I very rarely do that we're working in apartment houses you know 20 30 40 50 family complexes uh, old you know tile floors not a lot of room between the floors and, and what we use here or what we find mostly when we dig up one of these puppies is uh, this is a low seal trap I don't know if you can see the difference between these two traps you're gonna see why they call it low seal I mean look how deep this one is and look and look at this one here very shallow but it gets the job done and typically here depending upon the height of the tub now this is a this is a male T now these come you can request a standing waist when you buy a standing waist you can request a male T or you can request a female T and that's all gonna depend on you know how high the tub is there's a lot of factors that are going to determine which tea you're going to use and I will tell you that 90% of the time I use a male tea a male tea works sometimes it's not enough I need to use a female tea and when I have to use a female tea I will actually use that in conjunction with actually a like a close galvanized nipple so I'll put my galvanized nipple in here then I'll have a female tea I will screw the female T on top of the nipple and that'll just you know give me what I'm looking for when I'm trying to put these things together but if I can avoid using this because this is galvanized this is brass you have that two different metal thing going on there and typically that's what happens this nipple rots out because you know you're, you're, you're mixing it with brass pipe and that's that's what rots when these things go Typically here you'll see this nipple be rotten and to avoid that from happening I'll actually I'll use my a specialty no hub clamp and this specialty no hub clamp is uh, it's goes from inch and a half cast iron or plastic to inch and a half copper and it's also known affectionately as a CK 115 CK 115 and what I'll actually do is I will actually take this and I'll actually stretch it over the trap here well you know what I don't want to get crazy in the, in this video here 
but this will actually stretch over the trap. You must believe me. And then with a little, a little plumber's grease, a little silicone lube or a little pipe joint compound, you will take this T and actually this T will fit down inside this hole, but it fits nice and snugly. So you put that in there and that T will just drop down. It'll drop down inside of there. And then I'll follow that up with a, uh, with my clamp here. I'll open this up with my torque wrench and I'll actually clamp this T right onto the trap in certain cases, not all the time. It depends on my situation. So I, I will use this sometimes, sometimes I won't use it. Um, most times here in New York City, I have no problems using a male tee. When I, when, I, when I get my standing waist, I will tell you that 90% of the time I order them with a male tee. And I carry one female tee in the truck in the extreme, you know, rare uh, time when, it, when, when the male tee doesn't work out. So that's basically how that works. Now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to jump into a little screencast. I'll put a little screencast together for you and hopefully give you a better idea of the components of this thing. And coming out the other end here, typically in New York City, you know, it's all galvanized. We have all galvanized pipe. So you will have a combination of galvanized pipe and fittings going into a cast iron stack. And that's just what happens here in the Big Apple. So let's drop into this. Greencast, I'll give you uh, a little more information on standing waste. And, and again, if anybody has any particular questions or concerns or, or, or wants to know anything, you know, special about these things, uh, I, I will tell you that, you know, we can use them in a retrofit situation here. We still have hundreds, thousands of these things in, in multifamily dwellings. And, um, you know, if we, if one is leaking and we have to, change it we're allowed to change it but we're not allowed to put these in anymore in a, in a new plumbing situation even though i know it's old it's classic a lot of people like this old look of the old barrel but not allowed to use them here anymore uh for plumbing code reasons which i won't get into at the moment but anyway guys sit tight i'm gonna prepare this little screencast for you and again hopefully uh you know i'll clear up some questions that any of you may have And this is actually how it stops the water up. So there's the T. And don't forget, you have your chrome barrel screwed into the top of the T. And then in the chrome barrel is the plunger. And that would simply, when you lower that down, it actually goes into the bottom of the T. And that's what stops the water up. So what happens is the water starts to fill up in the tub. It'll actually fill up around the the plunger and the water will start to fill up inside the the chrome um standing chrome plated waste tube and simply when you want to let the water go down it's a matter of just you know you'd pull up on this and then you would just release the water but you drop it down it stops up you lift it the water goes out and simply, that's the way it works. Nothing fancy, but certainly practical. So here we are, the classic standing waste and overflow. Now, I do want to make a note here on this illustration. This is an antique version of a standing waste. In reality, the T is below the floor, and the bathtub is actually, the bottom of the bathtub is below the floor. The, it's a built-in bathtub. This particular tub you're looking at is a tub probably on legs. You can't see the legs. And it's an antique standing waist, and the shoe is sitting above the floor and gets connected to the strainer. But in reality, the T is below the floor, the bottom of the tub is below the floor, and the shoe gets connected to the bottom of the tub. Everything is below the floor. But it's the same concept. Exits the T, goes into a typically a low seal trap and then exits into the main waistline. Now you'll either find 
galvanized traps or brass traps. In the case of galvanized traps, they they were equipped with clean out plugs on them, which would rot out and just fall right out of the bottom of the trap. I could never figure out why they would put a clean out plug in the bottom of a galvanized trap that was buried under the floor. Made no sense to me, but nevertheless, that's the way they were. And typically the distance from the trap to where we actually connected into the main waistline was about 12 to 18 inches. It was comprised of maybe two or three short galvanized nipples, two galvanized fittings, a couple of 45 degree elbows, and boom, we were right into the main waist stack. Um, if there was a brass trap, most times where the galvanized nipple exited the, the bath trap, that's where it would rot out because you had those two different metals reacting to one another. Or if you had a female T and a galvanized nipple in between the trap and the female T, that galvanized nipple would typically rot out. And then there's also the case where the shoe would rot out because the shoe was only, it's tubular. And if it was back pitched and, it, and the water was laying inside the shoe, they typically would rot out. But anyway, when you drop that lift knob, you drop the plunger down, the tub would start to fill, the water would fill inside the barrel, as you can see. And as protection from overflow, they had a little hole, or at least they used to have big holes on either side of the plunger. So if the water got up that high, it would dump back into the plunger back into the drainage system. But as you saw up on the bench, the one I had in my hand had very little tiny holes up at the top there. And I seriously doubt if anybody was running the water really, really uh, fast, that they would take the water in enough time to prevent the tub from overflowing. But anyway, here it is, the classic standing waste and overflow. I don't put as many of them in as I used to, I guess because most of these buildings have their own maintenance people. But there are thousands of them out there. And, you know, when I get a call to do one, uh, you know, uh, brings back memories. So again, folks, the classic standing waste and overflow. I actually did this video at the request of a YouTube viewer. I hope I answered any questions you may have. Uh, and if uh, anybody has any questions, you guys can always email me. But there it is, folks, a staple piece of equipment here in New York City. So, folks, there you go. The classic standing waste and overflow. Thousands of them still in use here in New York City. Um, I still see them uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I will tell you the quality of the ones that they're churning out today aren't like the ones of yesteryear, but nevertheless, they're out there. Uh, we have to have them here because there are so many applications where these things still exist. And if anybody has any questions about the classic standing waste and overflow, feel free. Uh, my email is info at bobsplumbingvideos.com. If you have a particular situation and uh, you kind of can't figure out, uh, you know, how to do it or, 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 or what the situation is in your particular case, please, by all means, shoot me an email. Folks, thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again real soon. Please hit that subscribe button. And as I always like to say, happy plumbing. The classic standing waste and overflow. There are still thousands of them here in New York City, and that's what this video is all about.